Welcome to the United States Naval War College graduation ceremony for the class of 2022. Guests are asked to, to remain seated for student and faculty processions. For the student procession, the Navy Band Northeast will begin by playing the Naval War College March, written by former Secretary of the Navy, Ambassador J. William Middendorf II, Naval War College Foundation Trustee Emeritus, followed by the traditional pomp and circumstance. The faculty procession will be led by the faculty marshal, Professor Charles Chadbourne, and the Dean of Academics, Dr. Phil Hahn.
Italian Republic, Jamaica, Japan, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Republic of Kenya, Republic of Korea, Republic of Latvia, Lebanese Republic, Republic of Lithuania, Republic of Madagascar, Malaysia, Republic of Malnais, Islamic Republic of Mauritania, United Mexican States, Montenegro, the Kingdom of Morocco, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, New Zealand, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Kingdom of Norway, Sultanate of Oman, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Republic of Panama, Republic of the Philippines, Republic of Poland, Romania, Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Republic of Senegal, Republic of Serbia, Republic of Seychelles, Republic of Singapore, Republic of South Africa, Kingdom of Spain, Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, Kingdom of Sweden, Taiwan, United Republic of Tanzania, the Kingdom of Thailand, Democratic Republic of Timor-Leste, Togolese Republic, Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Republic of Tunisia, Ukraine, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, United States of America, and Socialist Republic of Vietnam. United States Armed Services and United States Government Agencies represented in the graduating class are the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, the United States Army, the United States Air Force, the United States Space Force, the United States Coast Guard, the United States National Guard, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Navy, the Department of the Army, the United States Senate, the United States House of Representatives, the Defense Criminal Investigative Service, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the Defense Senior Leadership Development Agency, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense Inspector General, the Department of Energy, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of Justice, the Department of State, the Department of the Treasury, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Executive Office of the President of the United States, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, the Government Accountability Office, the Hawaii Army National Guard, the Marine Corps Intelligence Activity, the Military Sealift Command, the Mississippi Army National Guard, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Naval Air Systems Command, Naval Air Warfare Center, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, Naval Facilities Engineering Command, Naval Installations Command, Naval Justice School, Naval Postgraduate School, Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Naval Sea Systems Command, 
Naval Special Warfare Command, Naval Surface Warfare Center, the Naval War Co College, Navy Cyber Warfare Development Command, Navy Legal Services Command, Navy Personnel Command, Navy Recruiting Command, Navy Mine Warfare Development Center, Office of Administration of the U.S. Courts, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, Office of the Chief of Naval Personnel, Office of the Judge Advocate General, the Office of Naval Intelligence, Surface Warfare Officers School Command, the United States Naval Academy, U.S. Africa Command, U.S. European Command, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. Army Public Affairs Center, U.S. Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Cyber Command, U.S. House of Representatives Armed Services Committee, the U.S. Joint Staff, the U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Pacific Fleet, U.S. Public Health Service, U.S. Secret Service, U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee, U.S. Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, U.S. Senate Office of Legislation Affairs, U.S. Special Operations Command, and Walter Reed National Military Medical Center.
rise for the arrival of the official party rendering honors to the Secretary of the Navy, the National Anthem, and remain standing through the invocation. Parade the Colors. The National Anthem will be sung by musician second class Holden Moyer from the Navy Band Northeast. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Retire the colors. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Rob Fastnot, Command Chaplain, Naval Station Newport, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Creator of the wind and seas, your word is a light upon our path and a salve to our weary souls. Today we celebrate a momentous occasion of graduation from this prestigious institution. We thank you for the students and instructors, friends and families gathered here. 
These students came from every clime and place to go out from here knowing that victory is from the sea. War begins in our minds, but peace comes from our hearts. May we all operate from a shared respect of humanity as lovers of our neighbors. This morning, we honor the transcendent, those who have come before us, and those who will follow. In all your holy names we pray, amen. Please be seated. All military members, please uncover at this time. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Captain Christopher Rohrbach, Chair, Joint Military Operations. Dr. Kevin McCraney, Chair, Strategy and Policy. Dr. Derek Reveren, Chair, National Security Affairs. Colonel Jay Schnelli, Deputy Dean, Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Rear Admiral Retired Edmund Cashman, Dean, College of Maritime Operational Warfare. Rear Admiral Retired Margaret Klein, Dean, College of Leadership and Ethics. Professor Walt Wildeman, Dean, College of Distance Education. Professor Thomas Mangold, Dean, International Programs and Maritime Security Cooperation. Dr. Phil Hahn, Dean of Academics. Dr. J. Hickey, Interim Provost. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy. And Rear Admiral Shoshana S. Chatfield, the 57th President of the United States Naval War College. It is my honor to present Rear Admiral Chatfield. Good afternoon. Well, I guess good morning. If you're on uh, European time, good afternoon. If you're on the West Coast and following us virtually, good morning. I know that many in our uh, graduating ranks today have friends and family tuning in from all over the world. So to our honored guests and all of those who are with us here in Newport and virtually globally, I want to welcome each of you and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro, for taking time out of your busy schedule to support our graduation ceremony. The last time the Secretary and I were sharing a stage, and that's a big honor for me twice this year, uh, we were at the USS Constitution for the change of command uh, for Skipper B.J. Farrell. And the difference about that day, even though it was sunny, was it was about 19 degrees, and I was quite aware that the secretary was hoping that I would speak a little faster. <laughs> I'm grateful that today it is a beautiful day in Newport. And I'm also somewhat grateful, despite the events of yesterday, um, that we can enjoy an unobstructed view of the Claiborne Pell Bridge. So I hope that everybody has a very pleasant day, that you remembered your sunscreen, and uh, please remember that uh, your uh, sunglasses are making you look really sharp and dangerous today. <laughs> I would also like to thank Admiral Keck, the Chief of the German Navy, for joining us today. Thank you, sir. I know it's a very tumultuous and busy time in Europe, and we're grateful that you could join us to support our transatlantic alliance and our students who are receiving diplomas today. Thank you. Today we are also joined by Ambassador J. William Mittendorf II. You've already heard his wonderful march this morning, and I want to thank you, sir, for attending our graduation ceremony and recognize your many years of service to the Naval War College and our mission. Thank you. Ambassador for making the trip to Newport today. I would also like to thank our Naval War College Foundation, uh, represented here today by Captain Retired 
uh, their chief executive officer, Mr. George Lang. Uh, I would like to, ch to thank all of the members of the Foundation Board of Trustees, the staff and the Foundation members, uh, the generosity in gifts uh, that have been given to the Naval War College have provided critical funding. It has enriched and enhanced the programs and initiatives that we are able to offer, so thank you. Now I know that we have many distinguished visitors here in person and also viewing us online. So thank you to all uh, of those distinguished visitors uh, who are dialed in today and supporting our community. I'd also like to give a warm welcome to our interim provost, to our deans, to our incredible faculty and staff. This community has set the bar high for our students and equipped these graduates to be tomorrow's leaders. And it is so satisfying to stand here and to see the fruits of those labors. We know that each one of you is ready to proceed to your next assignment as advocates for preservation of the peace and preservation of this security environment across the globe. I'd also like to say thank you to our dedicated military families and loved ones. Your support and endurance is what enables each member of this uh, student body to be able to keep their focus on their work. And now that our graduates are leaving us, it will be ever more important to continue that love and support, patience when needed, and pep talks when needed as people return to their operational assignments. And now to the class of 2022, congratulations. And I'm gonna repeat that a little bit. And now to the class of 2021, congratulations. And now to the class of 2020, Congratulations, because we have members from each of those classes here with us today. COVID can't beat us. You came and you'll walk and you'll remember this day and your experience with the Naval War College for the rest of your lives. I was um, just yesterday that Admiral Kack said, in my professional life, it was the best year I had. So sir, thank you. I know that your sentiment conveys and I know that uh, each member of the class will reflect fondly back at the time at Newport. Students, you're graduating at a time of conflict in the world and the lessons you have learned may be needed sooner than you anticipated. During your time in Newport, the Russian Federation has invaded a sovereign neighbor, neighbor bringing interstate war back to Europe at a level not seen since the end of the Second World War. We, along with our allies and partners, are standing together against this unprovoked aggression and are employing all available security cooperation tools in support of the Ukrainian people as they defend themselves in support against this aggression. And although this conflict may, see far, may seem far away from Newport, this war has directly impacted our Naval War College community. And for that reason, I ask you to join with me in a short moment of silence for our support to our Ukrainian students and their families and our alumni who are facing danger today at the hands of all Russian instruments of national power, including military action in violation of, of international law. Thank you. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro was sworn in as the 78th Secretary of the Navy on August 9th, 2021. Born in Havana, Cuba, Secretary Del Toro immigrated to the United States with his families 
as refugees in 1962. He was raised in the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood of New York City, where he attended public schools and received an appointment to the United States Naval Academy, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering in 1983. His 22-year naval career included a series of critical appointments and numerous tours of duty at sea, including being the first commanding officer of the guided missile destroyer USS Bulkley, DDG-84, senior executive assistant to the director for program analysis and evaluation in the office of the Secretary of Defense, and special assistant to the director and deputy director of the Office of Management and Budget. After retiring at the rank of commander, Secretary Del Toro founded SBG Technology Solutions Incorporated in 2004. As its CEO and president, he supported defense programs across a host of in immediate and long-term Department of Navy issue areas, including shipbuilding, AI, cybersecurity, acquisition programs, space systems, health, and training. He graduated from our Naval War College in 1996 with a Master's in National Security Studies, and he has also earned a Master's in Space Systems Engineering from the Naval Postgraduate School and a Master's in Legislative Affairs from George Washington University. Will all of our attendees please join me in welcoming the 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Good morning, Naval War College. My God, is there a prettier view in the face of the earth? You're all so very lucky. I can't tell you how proud I am to be here today with all of you. President Chatfield, Admiral, Mr. Secretary, thank you for your, your leadership, Admiral, of this magnificent institution, our beloved Navy War College. I have great memories of studying here as a young naval officer in my tiny little office closet under the stairs at 134 Jones Street while my wife Betty cared for our four small children. I couldn't have done it without her, and I thank her from afar. To this day, we both look on the Navy War College degree on the wall as a shared accomplishment. And I hope that is true for every single one of your families here today. So to all the spouses, parents, children, and loved ones here today, thank you for your support and encouragement of these distinguished graduates. And how about a hand of applause for all our family members here today. Even the young small children running around paying no attention to me. I love it. And now I want to congratulate the Naval War College's class of 2021 and 22. The intellectual acumen and personal drive that you've demonstrated marks you individually as a leader, capable of the analytic, but more importantly, more importantly, the strategic problem solving that our world requires today. My challenge to you is this. Use the strong grounding that you've received from this institution to deter and prevent conflicts, not just win them. 60 years ago, Soviet Premier, Premier Nikita Khrushchev began preparations to place nuclear missiles on the island of my birthplace, Cuba. It precipitated what is known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy's team worked around the clock to take the world back from the brink of nuclear war. They challenged multiple aspects of warfighting doctrine, from the first strike timelines to the minimum effective range of a naval blockade. They considered the lessons of history, including the escalations of World War I that haunted President Kennedy as he read from Barbara Tuckman's The Guns of August. They made the best decisions they could with incomplete information. But above all, they focused on the big picture, on the strategy, finding a way to deter a malign adversary while at the same time maintaining the communication that provided the Soviet Union with a peaceful way out. 
you must be able to do the same. You have been given the tools to make tough decisions when knowledge is incomplete and the risks are high. Alfred Thayer Mahan, whose office was in that corner office there, said that the study of history lies at the foundation of all sound military conclusions and practice. But as you have learned at this institution, you cannot study passively. History must be inter interrogated, examined, and challenged in order to apply it successfully to the lessons of today. The 19th century French writer Pierre-Marc Gaston said that we should be judged by our questions, not our answers. And indeed, as secretary, I found that one of the most important aspects of my job is indeed just that, asking the right questions. You should all do the same. Because more than anything else, a healthy curiosity about what lies over the horizon will give you the space and time to adjust course. We need you to go beyond the ideas of this time and better prepare our world for the future. This week marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. The carriers that won that battle were constructed before the war because of the foresight of naval thinkers willing to challenge battleship orthodoxy. The intelligence that pinpointed the enemy's location was achieved because of technology, creative thinking, and strategic analysis. And the success of our frontline pilots was enhanced by the tactics and formations developed through years of preparation and wargaming, and then the new domain of maritime aviation. But there were setbacks as well. For example, the torpedoes failed to perform as expected due to flawed and unchallenged assumptions and pre-war manufacturing and testing. And the actions of commanders on both sides contributed to significant missed opportunities as aviation warfare disrupted old concepts of distance, force concentration, and the culmination point. As we enter now the age of hypersonic missiles, fifth generation fighters, and renewed strategic competition, you must consider the lessons of the past through the lens of the present. Don't ever stop posing hard questions, challenging assumptions, and solving problems with creativity and drive. I assure you, you'll never have all the money that you want. When we founded this institution, Rear Admiral Stephen Luce said the Navy War College would be, quote, a place of original research on all questions of war and statementship for the prevention of war. These words are etched on glass at the entrance to the college to remind us all of the basis of the college's success and its very purpose. There are many war colleges and many staff colleges around the world, but there, is, but there are few that have such a distinguished faculty or history itself. Their research and writing stand at the forefront of the broadcast and most difficult security issues that nations and Navy face. These issues include the very nature and character of naval power, its uses, its limitations in both war and peace. The education that you received here is designed to provide you with the analytic skills and the methods to navigate the unknown. So as you go back to your daily responsibilities, be sure to maintain a continuous learning habit based on your experience at this college. Keep reimagining, reinventing, and reengineering to meet the relentless demand for innovation, because that's the only way that we can stay ahead of a rapidly changing world. One of my top priorities as Secretary of the Navy is to empower our people through a culture of warfighting excellence. The most important aspect of that is education. That is why I have formed a task force to examine our approach to professional military education, from teaching methods and curriculum to institutional investments. Later this year, I will release an education strategy based on those findings to ensure we are advancing the effective, relevant, and adoptive education required to maintain the advantage over our adversaries. Our mission demands leaders like yourselves who possess the highest intellectual and warfighting capabilities to confront the many dangers of this complex world. Our naval education institutions must develop leaders like yourself with the warfighting rigor, intellectual capacity, and innovation to hold our strategic advantage against our competitors. The Navy War College is central to that effort. Its many departments and programs have a direct impact on our operations and strategic planning. Our senior uniform leaders and I have taken part in many exercises already here at the Wargaming Department, using the results to directly inform our operational practices. The Center for Naval Warfare Studies provides vital analytic tools for leaders across the department. The Charles H. Stockton Center for the Study of International Law is foundational
to our understanding and application of the law of naval warfare. The Institutes for China and Russia, maritime studies bring linguistic and cultural understanding to the areas which will define the strategic environment for decades to come. Other important centers here focus on critical areas such as cyber and future naval warfare and the central aspects of leadership and ethics. And the John B. Hattendorf Center for Maritime Historical Research brings new and original insights to history that help us understand current and future issues. It was my privilege to study under the tutelage of Professor Hattendorf, who is joining us today through Zoom, and I wish him a speedy recovery. I don't know if he ever imagined that his student would become Secretary of the Navy, but I'm proud to be, have always been his student. The lessons I learned from him about Mahan and Sun Tzu served me well throughout my career as a surface warfare officer from the Cold War to the Gulf War to the Global War on Terror. These lessons informed the Secretary of the Navy. The world transforms again with hostile aggression from Moscow, the pacing threat of Beijing, and the accelerating reality of climate change. Mahan's emphasis on sea control has never been more relevant as nearly 90% of the world's trade travels on the ocean and one third of that passing through the South China Sea. But the definition of sea control must be expanded to, ex to encompass the many domains that were not ex exploited as warfighting theaters in Mahan's time, air, undersea, cyberspace, and more. Our national and economic security depends on a modern vision of sea control through distributed maritime operations and other warfighting concepts. Most of all, it depends on strong, principled, and cooperative naval forces backed by sound strategy. Each of you has an important role to play in that effort. Those of you returning to the fleet and the force must take from this campus a deep understanding of how our warfighting concepts contribute to our overall integrated deterrence efforts. We look to those who work on Capitol Hill to ensure that policies and appropriations align with the strategic needs of our nation. We look to our civilians, industry, and academic leaders to keep challenging assumptions and innovating new solutions to our global challenges. Staying ahead of cybersecurity, hypersonic, weapons, logistics, and acquisitions takes the best minds of the entire force. Addressing global challenges like climate change requires the principal cooperation and the best ideas of our entire world. And we look to the many international students here today to continue working, exercising, thinking, and above all, communicating with us all for years to come. Earlier this week, I was at the Swedish Embassy celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Royal Swedish Navy. I was proud to note that our first international graduate here at the War College back in 1894 was actually from Sweden. But I was even more proud to note that there are Swedish graduates in the class today as well. All told, there are 120 international officers from 78 countries in the class of 2022. Civilians from 10 different agencies, plus congressional staff, sailors, Marines, soldiers, airmen, Coast Guard men. I look to your class as a model of cooperation and excellence, and I urge you to stay in touch and keep working with each other. While I learned much from my Naval War College professors, the most valuable lessons were the ones that we learned from each other. Those are the friendships that are still hold true today. I'm sure the Admiral would agree with me. There is no substitute for the shared experiences of our allies and partners working together to deter our adversaries and protect our world. And I'd like all our allies and partners to please stand up and take a moment to be recognized. Please stand up right now. Thank you. Last month, I visited the USS Sullivan's a destroyer like the one I used to command. Last year, her crew completed a historic seven-month deployment in the combined strike group of the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the UK's new flagship carrier. Along the way, they operated alongside allies and partners, including Australia, France, Israel, Italy, New Zealand, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, and many others. Just two months after that deployment, the USS Sullivan's joined NATO allies in deterring Russian aggression with forward presence in the Danish Straits and the Baltic Seas. That is the level of allied unity and strength neither China nor Russia could ever hope to achieve. Because unlike Moscow and Beijing, we don't treat our allies like client states or satellites. We respect them as partners, leaders, and friends. We may not agree on everything, but we all agree that cooperation and principles must always stand above aggression and isolation. You must continue to build on that spirit as you move forward. Each of you is a diplomat, 
a problem solver, and a futurist for our world. Let the lessons of this beloved institution inform every aspect of your career. And don't ever lose sight of the tremendous network that you have right here. So go back to your services, but keep coordinating across the joint force. Go back to the Hill, but keep working across party lines. Go back to your agencies, but keep sharing your best ideas. And go back to your nations, but keep building on the bonds and friendship of support. Never forget that you've accomplished together here and how it can help build a better world. Let that spirit fuel the innovation we need to stay ahead and preserve the hard-won freedom of the seas. I would like to close by highlighting one particular leader and innovator who helped win and protect that freedom. He was an engineering officer and navigator aboard Landing Craft Support 53, a ship which saw action at Iwo Jima, Okinawa, and Formosa. As our 62nd Secretary of the Navy, he championed personally the Ohio-class submarine and the Aegis weapon system, both of which still defend our nation today. And as ambassador to the Netherlands, permanent representative to the Organization of American States and the, Euro and the U.S. representative to the European community, he helped forge the ironclad alliances and the partnerships that knit our world together today. He epitomizes the enduring service and commitment that every one of you can bring to this world. That is why I am so honored that he is here with us today Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in again honoring the service of Ambassador Bill Mittendorf. I want to tell you that I've reached out to every former Secretary of the Navy. Our eldest is actually Paul Ignatius at the age of 101. And uh, Secretary Mittendorf is 98. I hope that's a trend that we continue to pursue in the future. <laughs> but allow me a moment to take this opportunity for a little surprise for the Secretary. So it is now my distinct honor and pleasure to announce that I am naming one of our newest destroyers, DDG-138, in his honor as the future USS J. William Mittendorf. The men and women, the men and women who will sail that vessel for years to come will be strengthened by the legacy, please have a seat, of their distinguished namesake. And their service will be impacted in countless ways by the actions and decisions of today's graduates. So go forth, class of 2021 and 22, with the inspiration of those who came before you like Ambassador Mittendorf, and those who depend on you like all who, who will sail in his namesake destroyer. Once again, I am deeply honored, and I thank you and your families for your efforts to secure this marvelous education. Thank you for your commitment to public service, to global security, and the enduring cause of peace throughout the world. Congratulations, and may God bless each and every one of you and your families. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro, for your remarks, and thank you for your participation in this ceremony and your continued support of this college. Academic awards will now be presented to students who have distinguished themselves through exceptional achievement. For every resident student present here today, there are nine other students located around the globe engaged in the U.S. Naval War College's distance education programs. This year, there are 1,925 graduates of the College of Distance Education, of whom 121 are here with us today. Distance education is a unique challenge in that the student completes his or her education while engaged in their full-time day job, thus requiring special initiative and dedication. It is with a profound sense of camaraderie and appreciation for their efforts that we salute our distance education students. The McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Seminar Education is sponsored by Captain D. Robert McGinnis, United States Navy Reserve, retired. A Naval War College Foundation Trustee Emeritus, 
A cash award, it recognizes the Fleet Seminar Program graduate of the College of Distance Education who displays superior standards of academic performance, professionalism, and community service. Mr. George Lang, Jr., Chief Executive Office of the Naval War College Foundation, will present the award. The winner of the McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Seminar Education for the Class of 2022 is Lieutenant James Brewer, Medical Corps, United States Navy. The Admiral Arlie A. Burke Award for Academic Excellence by an International Officer. This award is presented to the international master's degree student with the highest grade point average at the completion of the academic year. This year's award is presented to Lieutenant Commander Marta Pratalassi from Italy. Each year, the Navy League of the United States presents two awards to in-resident students, one to a graduate of the senior level college and one to a graduate of the intermediate level college. These awards are given in memory of Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce and Admiral William S. Sims, respectively. Admiral Luce was the first president of the Naval War College and Admiral Sims was president of the Naval War College at two points in his distinguished career. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of the armed services in the public interest. Commander Mike Sline, U.S. Navy retired, past president, Newport County Council of the Navy League of the United States, will present the awards. The Stephen B. Luce Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Warfare is presented to Ms. Susan Bridenstein, Department of State. The William S. Sims Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Command and Staff is presented to Major Deborah Gaddis, United States Air Force.
Please join us in congratulating all of the award winners for their outstanding efforts and performance and to show appreciation to the sponsors of the awards for their continued generosity to the U.S. Naval War College. We will now begin the presentation of graduates. Admiral Chatfield, please move to the podium. Naval Command College, please rise and remain standing. College of Naval Warfare, please rise and remain standing. Naval Staff College, please rise and remain standing. College of Naval Command and Staff, please rise and remain standing. Maritime Security and Governance Staff Course, please rise and remain standing. College of Distance Education, please rise and remain standing. Admiral Chatfield, I have the honor to present the United States Naval War College Class of 2022. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. And 21 and 20. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the Congress of the United States, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the New England Commission of Higher Education, I confer upon you the appropriate degrees and diplomas from the United States Naval War College with all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. Will all attendees please join me in congratulating the 2022, 21 and 20 graduates of the United States Naval War College and their families. Graduates, please be seated. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. A diploma with highest distinction is presented to the top 5% of each graduating class. A diploma with distinction is presented to the next 15% of each graduating class. Graduates will proceed to the stage as their name is read. Please hold your applause until all names have been read so that all names and recognitions may be heard. Graduates, as you come forward, please remove your covers and your sunglasses. <laughs> 